Are you considering going to a Merit Vacation Club timeshare presentation? I'm gonna talk about today what you might hear in a timeshare sales presentation with Marriott versus the truth. Let's talk about it right after this. Hello and welcome to Destination Timeshare. I'm Jeremy. We're now talking about Marriott Vacation Club timeshare presentations versus what is the truth. We're gonna jump right into this today. The first one here is talking about reservations. When you're talking about Marriott Vacation Club with the timeshare salesperson, they're gonna be pitching to you the ease of making reservations. Just go online, book what you want, kind of works just like a hotel. You do have to maybe book 12 or 13 months in advance. They're not gonna talk about that too much. They're gonna stress the ease of just using your points that you purchased to go in and make a reservation. So that's the sales pitch. The truth is, it isn't always that easy. One of the biggest complaints I see in the comments of a lot of my videos is essentially inability to get the reservation that people want. Why is this exactly? Well, it's because the way the Marriott Vacation Club system has been set up, it's essentially an overlay system on top of weeks-based ownership. A lot of inventory gets into the program, in fact, something called the Marriott Vacation Club Exchange Company via owners electing their week for points. Marriott Vacation Club also has a trust which has deeded points that you can purchase, obviously, and that trust owns about 650 so million points. So there is a lot of points in that trust, but primarily the bulk of inventory all rely on owners to elect their week for points and also Many of the resorts were primarily sold out as weeks-based ownership, and only a few weeks, actually, of those resorts exist in the trust. So the biggest problem is a lot of owners use their weeks. They might trade through Interval International. Of course, a lot of owners do convert and elect their weeks for points, but keep in mind, making reservations isn't going to be as easy as they say it will be. All right, now the second thing here, the timeshare sales pitch is that resale points won't be and aren't as good as points purchased from Marriott Vacation Club. Now, what is the truth? Well, that is that Marriott Vacation Club points purchased on the resale market are essentially the same as points purchased directly from them. There is one big difference, so just consider that when you buy resale points, you are gonna have an additional fee payable to Marriott, $3 per point. It's in fact, $750 per beneficial interest Beneficial interest is 250 points, but there is a $3,000 minimum. But once you've paid that, those points effectively work exactly the same as developer points bought directly from Marriott Vacation Club. So don't believe the salesperson when they pitch to you that resale points aren't as good as developer. All right, now the third one here, maybe you're a weeks based owner and you own a week and you're able to actually convert or elect your week for a bound club points. So what that means is you take your week, maybe you get 3000 points for your week, and then you can use those 3000 points to book somewhere else within the Marriott Vacation Club system. Well, the sales pitch is gonna tell you that those points from your enrolled week are not as good as trust points that you can now buy from Marriott. Kind of the big push is, you own points, you come in for a sales presentation, they wanna sell you trust points <laughs> directly from them at pretty high prices, going right, right now about 16.50 per point. So they're gonna tell you, hey, those enroll points that you already own aren't as good as the points you can buy from us, but guess what? You can supercharge your ownership and those points that you already own by maybe buying even as little as 1,000 points from us today. This is kind of the, one of the big fibs they'll say, because the truth is that you don't need to buy any points from them to take advantage of the points you already own. Buying points from them, which are trust points, won't automatically give the points that you get from electing your week for points. It's not gonna give you anything extra. Those points from your week that you elect, well, those can make reservations in the Marriott Vacation Club Exchange Company. And those trust points can make reservations in the Marriott Vacation Club Trust or the Marriott Vacation Club Exchange Company. And that's kind of something 
that they'll tell you, hey, your points can only book the exchange company, but if you buy these trust points, you can use these trust points in the trust, and you can combine the points you get from your week that's enrolled and get extra inventory available to you. Guess what? Truth is that essentially there is not really kind of this trust inventory that's separate. Technically and legally, they can have it, but what Marriott Vacation Club seems to do is they just toss all of that trust inventory and all of those legacy weeks that are converted to points all gets put into the exchange company and a point is a point. There's no difference really, at least fundamentally, between trust points and enroll points from your week. So before we get on to number four, I'd really like to ask you to hit that like button down below. It really does help out these videos. You know, really important thing to make sure these videos get out to more people who are looking to purchase Marriott Vacation Club and love timeshare in general. Really appreciate it. Thank you very much. Now let's talk about number four, and that just happens to be the Explorer Collection. I actually really need to do a whole video on kind of the falsehoods that are told about the Explorer Collection. That is cruises and tours mainly through Colette. The cruises are obviously through cruise lines. What they tell you is you can use your points to book all these fantastic trips, whether it be a safari, maybe a tour through China, might be even a wonderful cruise. They're gonna show you all of these great point values. And what they're gonna to tend to show is certain items, certain trips, certain tours, certain cruises that they know kind of are comparable to the cost of the maintenance fees that you pay for the trust points to what it would cost to book those with cash. They might even look at some of the astronomical cruises, maybe river cruises, Viking river cruises, Viking ocean cruises, the really high-end stuff that's a lot of money when you pay with cash, those can actually be a fairly decent value when you book with points, but you do have to spend a lot of points to book something like that. You might just be buying 3,000 points and that costs, say, 14,000. Well, where are you gonna make up the shortfall there in points? The truth is that in most cases, and sometimes by as much as 30%, when you're looking at the cost of trust points, in the maintenance fees that you pay per point for how much that cruise or tour costs in points to if you're just a book that cruise or tour with cash. Usually maybe 30, 40, even 50% cheaper just to book it with cash. There are gonna be some outliers here, but for the most part, Marriott is making money on how much they have to pay to book that cruise for you because when you use points, they just go out and book it with cash and then they take your points and try and rent them out by making reservations available on Marriott.com. They're making money on the spread. So essentially, they're not going to give you a good deal, or at least as good of a deal as it sounds like for those cruises and tours that the timeshare salesperson is trying to pitch you. All right, now the last one, number five. That just happens to be destination escapes. These can be a pretty good deal if, big if, you can take advantage of them. They're gonna tout these great deals inside of 60 days. You can book 30 or 40% off destination escapes. Well, that is true, but realize that it's a very limited and select inventory in locations with lots of supply in times of low demand. You might find places like Las Vegas, certain times of the year when demand is low, maybe the fall, or you might even find places like Palm Desert in the summer when it's 120 degrees outside. We actually like it there when it's 120 degrees. We've gone there several times. I'll actually put a link to a playlist of Palm Desert Resorts up there. But just realize these probably aren't going to be locations or times of the year when kids are out of school and most families are traveling. If you're retired or you have the ability to travel kind of anytime, that extra flexibility, hey, these might be a good deal but they're gonna tout them as something great. You can just save all these points by booking these destination escapes when the reality is that the inventory out there is limited and guess what? You also have to call to make the reservation. What do you think of these? Are there any things that I missed? If so, leave those down in the comments below. To take a look at another video about Marriott Vacation Club, I'm gonna put the good and the bad of Marriott Vacation Club, a link to it right here. So check that out next. Thanks for watching and remember, until next time, the best destination is always a timeshare.